Brenton here from American English with this guy. And the goal of today's English lesson is to help you improve your English. One of the best ways to improve your English is through listening and reading. And today we are going to do both. It's basically like you are going to be one of my students for the next 15 or 20 minutes for this free English class. It's almost like you are an American student taking a class, but you don't have to pay any money and you don't have to leave your house. So I am an English teacher in the United States. I've actually been doing it for 20 years and I do something very similar with my native English students each week. We work on vocabulary words. So in this lesson, we're going to discuss 13 very difficult advanced vocabulary words. And then after in another lesson, also free, we're actually going to read that article. It's a pretty advanced article, but if you have the vocabulary words somewhat known, I'm not asking you to memorize them. I'm just asking you to kind of know them, be familiar with them. It'll make reading that article a lot easier. And all of these words can be found on a Quizlet I made. I make these for my own students too. There's a link in the description. But Quizlet is a great way to study vocabulary words. You can play games with them. You'll see that there is a whole list of vocabulary words with the definitions. So 13 vocabulary words. Again, this is free. Quizlet is free. We just have to see some ads sometimes, but somebody's got to make some money, right? Quizlet's free. They got to pay for it. So you'll see some ads every so often, probably ads for companies near where I live. I think the first one is like a main family credit union. Yeah. It's like a, a local bank. I think I actually have an account there, but the article will eventually read is about a Russian cosmonaut crew that goes into space to film a small part of a movie that we'll, we'll call it a segment, but that's one of our words we'll talk about in a minute, but let's go over all 13 words. I'll give you the definition. I'll give you the pronunciation, and then I will use that word or a form of that word in a sentence to help you understand the word. And of course you can pause, rewind if you need to, rewatch this lesson a couple times to get these vocabulary words down before we read the article together. The first one is extensive. You can see that right there, extensive. And it means a large amount. So if you look at that picture right there, well, that looks like an extensive amount of land. So we could use that in a sentence that farmer has an extensive amount of land to farm. In other words, there's a lot of land there, extensive. Sometimes there'll be a storm, maybe a hurricane. And when that hurricane goes through the town, there will be extensive damage, extensive, a large amount. Alien. They're almost two different definitions for this word alien. Here it says being from another planet, foreign, strange. So clearly that person, that being is not from earth. I don't think. So we could call them an alien. Maybe they travel in a UFO that stands for unidentified flying object. But also alien can mean foreign. So the term is not used as much these days, but if someone came from another country, they might be considered an alien. And sometimes you hear that term illegal alien. That is someone who has entered a country without permission. And so illegal alien is sometimes used in the news. So two different definitions for alien, but the one in the article will be a being from another planet. 
So let's think of a sentence where we could use alien, but it means like the thing in the picture. When the space crew went into space, they saw an alien. I don't know, in the news here lately in the United States, there has been talk of people going into space and seeing strange objects. They might see a UFO, something they can't identify, something they can't explain. But I don't think anybody has ever actually seen an alien, at least not an astronaut in space. Do you believe in aliens? Why don't you leave a comment below? Do you believe in aliens? I would love to know. The next word here is fiction. And I use this in my classroom all the time. I think a synonym or another word that means the same thing as fiction is fake. But let's look at the definition here. A story that is not true or is made up. So in other words, it's fake. The way I remember fake fiction, they, they both start with F. And if you look at that picture, it does actually look maybe like that is a UFO, something flying in the air. We don't know what it is. It doesn't look like a plane. We might say that is a UFO. So any stories that have UFOs in them have to be a work of fiction. It has to be fake. The next one here, civilians. And you can see the definition, people not in the military or police. So if you're in the military, you might be in the army or the Navy. I am a civilian. I have not served in the military. And I'm also not in a police force. So we would call people like me, regular everyday people, not wearing a uniform in the army or the police, we would call us, or at least me, a civilian. You, you might be in the military or a police officer. If you are, thank you for your service. But uh, I am not. So I could say in a sentence, the woman was not wearing her uniform, so she looked like a civilian. The woman was not wearing her uniform, so she looked like a civilian. The next one here is veteran, veteran. The definition, someone very experienced in something, an expert. So we do have that definition. At my school, we have some teachers who are veterans. I would be considered a veteran because I have been teaching 20 years. The opposite of a veteran is a novice. Someone who is new at something is a novice. So we do have some novice teachers at my school, teachers who are new at the job, new at the profession. But if you've been doing something for a long time, you can be considered a veteran. Also, if you look at this picture here, this person looks like they are in uniform. A veteran can also mean someone who was in the military, the army, the Navy, the Air Force, but they have retired. They're no longer in the Air Force or the Army. So a veteran is someone who was in the military but has been retired. So two slightly different definitions there for veteran. The next word is segment. And you can see a small part of something bigger. So let's take movies because in the article we will read later on, they're making a movie. They're filming a movie but not the whole thing, just a segment, just a smaller part of the movie. They'll be flying into space and filming a movie up there, up in space. I hope you watch this entire lesson, but maybe you already know the word segment. So you might skip this little part in which I talk about segment. So you would skip this segment of the lesson. Let's use segment and a sentence. Because I had to go to the bathroom, I missed a small segment of the movie. The next word is intense. And you can see that means very strong, intense. Sometimes I think of intense smells. If you walk into a perfume store, the smell might be very intense. Maybe you have a friend who's very intense. They have a lot of emotion. Maybe they get really excited. Maybe they get really mad. If 
you get really happy, that can also be tense. intense. Anything that's very strong. Let's think of a movie. Maybe you went to a movie. There were a lot of guns and flashes and action. Well, that might be a very intense movie. Let's use it in a sentence, and I'm going to use a movie as an example. The movie was so intense, I had to leave the theater. It was just too much for you. You had to leave. You couldn't take it any longer. The next word is subjected, and that means forced to do something. You have to do it. It usually has a bad connotation, that word, a bad feeling to it, subjected. I'm, I'm big on the movie thing right now, so I'm going to use that as an example. Maybe you have a friend and they really want you to see this movie. So you go to the movies with them, but you don't like it. You might feel like you were subjected to the movie. Maybe it felt a, a little bit like torture. You had to sit through two hours of a movie that you didn't really like, but you didn't want to hurt your friend's feelings. My students are 13 and 14 years old. Believe it or not, they might not like English class. So I hope they don't feel subjected to my class, but I'm sure every so often they probably leave class and wish they were playing a video game instead, subjected. The next word is suspension. If you look at that bridge, that's a suspension bridge. And that's what we call that type of bridge in English. If you've ever seen the Golden Gate Bridge, kind of a famous bridge in the United States, it's, it's a suspension bridge. And if you look at the definition for suspension, it pretty much means hanging in air. You might also hear the form suspended. So those wires on that bridge are suspended in air. They're, they're hanging in the air. If someone went parachuting and they got caught in the trees, we could say that they are suspended above the ground. That film crew that goes into space, they're going to be suspended in the air. They're just like hanging in the air or floating in the air. So to use suspension in a sentence, let's say the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco is a suspension bridge. The next word is acceleration. Acceleration, that's how you say that. And it means to make something go faster. You can see that picture of that soccer ball rolling down a hill. Well, as it gets closer to the bottom of the hill, it's going to go faster or it's going to accelerate. In your car, you have the brake pedal, but you also have the gas pedal. That's what makes the, the car go. If you push down on the gas pedal, it makes the car accelerate or go faster. But we also call that gas pedal sometimes the accelerator. To use it in a sentence, I could say I pushed the accelerator to make the car go faster. To use acceleration in a sentence, I could say because of acceleration, the ball moved faster as it went down the hill. Oh goodness, this next one is hard to say. I might say it a couple times, okay? I might help you pronounce it by saying it a couple times. Let's get rid of acceleration. Here we go. This is it. Psychologically. 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 It relates to the human mind and feelings. Let's talk about movies again. We have a type of movie in English called a psychological thriller. And a thriller is a movie that can be very intense. But if it's a psychological thriller... It makes you think. Often there's a mystery involved. Maybe who committed a crime. If a movie makes you think, we could call it psychological. In English, in college, there is a class that a lot of freshmen will take. Freshmen are students who are in their first year of college, and it's called psychology. And it's all about how the brain works. Psychology is the noun. Psychological is the adjective. Books can also be psychological thrillers. 
If this English lesson is helping you improve your English in any way, you mind uh, hitting that thumbs up? Really helps the channel. Thank you. The next word is debut. Debut. Yeah, I know there's a T at the end. I don't know why there is a T at the end. I think it does come from the French, but we pronounce it debut. And it's a first doing something, often in front of people. So the first time someone does something, usually in front of people, we could call that debut. Maybe an actress is in her first movie. We would call that her debut movie. Maybe a soccer player, you, you might call it a football player, but maybe a soccer player has their first game ever. That's their debut game. First time ever. Now remember, usually in front of people, that's, that's a key. There is an audience for the debut. Collaborating. Collaborating. It means working together. At my school, I often collaborate with other teachers. Since I teach English, right next to me is another teacher who teaches history. Sometimes we'll work together. We'll collaborate on a certain unit or a certain lesson. We share the same students, so it's often helpful when they hear similar things from the same teachers. You might have a collaboration at work or you might collaborate with your coworkers. Hope you enjoyed this English lesson. Eventually, not sure if it's out yet, but there will be an article and we will read that together in another video. So you can click on that, but if you're watching this right when this video debuts, right when it comes out for the first time, it might take me a couple days to get that lesson out. In fact, it might be a live lesson. We might read the article together. But if you're looking for something else to watch, take a look at this one. And that is where I visit an American farm stand and teach some English along the way. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.